Okay, so I propose uh, to start. It's uh, five past one in Amsterdam. Greetings from Amsterdam. Uh, welcome to the to the second session of the Dragon's Den series. So in this session, we will be uh, learning how to develop uh, a business plan from your ID. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, who are we? My name is Maxim Eislen. I work for ICN NL uh, in Amsterdam as an expert green economy. I work a lot on the topic of climate finance, uh, seeking to link business cases with nature-based solutions. I've been working with uh, CSOs a lot in the global south to help them uh, to mobilize private finance. Uh, this is my third CBA, uh, and especially in these times that we cannot travel, I'm very excited to, uh, to meet so many people from all, all over the world, all together. So I'm very excited to, uh, to moderate this session. I'm doing this together with Willem de Beste. Uh, you see him on the video. He has done the introduction this morning. Jesper Hornberg, uh, he will do the pitch development uh, training tomorrow. And Jules Koppe, he is our host. Hello, Jules. He is doing the, the technical Zoom uh, things. So uh, this is the team who, who is working on the Dragon's Den series. Maria Goss has entered. Welcome, Maria. So next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a nice uh, small group, so, so we can really uh, have, uh, have a discussion with, with each other. And yeah, you get the most out, out of these sessions if you actively participate. Of course, it's not only us who, is, who are sending information. It's about uh, learning from each other, from our projects and together grow our, our capabilities in, in this topic. So um, it doesn't really matter how much you know about business case development, if the, the goal is to bring you a step further into your thinking. It doesn't matter if you have, have made a lot of business case bef before or if you're just starting uh, think, thinking about how to make a business out of, out of your project. The goal is to bring you just a step further into your thinking. So I see that Simona also is entered. Welcome, Simona. You are jumping at the right moment because we're now uh, have a small round of introduction. Could, could you all say your name, your organization and role if you have made a business plan before? And also most importantly, if you have an ID of, uh, of, of, of one of your projects uh, that might be turned to a business ID. So the floor is yours. Who can start? Maybe I kick off um, uh, just briefly. I'm Jesper Hornberg. I'm the lead on innovation and scaling at the Global Resilience Partnership. Um, very nice to see you all here. Thank you, Jesper. Maria, could you maybe introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Maria Goss. I'm with Practical Action. Um, I'm the Agriculture Systems and Innovation Lead uh, for the Organization for Southern Africa. And um, yeah, I have never made a business plan before, um, but I'm the technical lead in terms of agriculture, climate resilience, adaptation. So I mainly go uh, work towards three in terms of uh, identifying ideas and opportunities and uh, potential interventions, uh, depending on the context, of course, because we... Zimbabwe is developed into five agroecological or five farming regions. So, yeah, um, I do have an overall role of developing the strategic business plan for the region. 
but then um, the ideas and the proposals I, I put forward or with the team, with the technical team are then converted into uh, business plans by the business development lead within the organization. So we work, very, we work very closely as a team, yeah. Very good, Maria, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Who else wants to introduce uh, themselves? Yes, I think I can. Uh, I can take the floor. Uh, my name is Stanley Ochango, and my organization is the Technical University of Kenya, and I particularly am uh, associated with the Center of Integrated uh, Water Resources Management at this center. We are currently a, 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 an active member of the Brescia project, actually led by the University of Southampton by Professor Justin Sheffield. And um, uh, on the sidelines of that, uh, when we talk of uh, if I've made a business plan, yes, I've tried a lot of interventions and trying to market them with uh, possible funders like Aqua for All. Of specific mention is uh, uh, there's a time uh, we, we partnered with a guy and we were trying to develop a web-based application system for drinking water supply, especially when you talk of water quality measurement, and simply trying to focus on uh, enhancing accessibility to people who are living below the poverty line in the peri-urban areas of Kenya, specifically Nairobi. Then also currently at the Center of Integrated Water Resource Management, uh, Technical University of Kenya, we are also working on uh, the development of a drought uh, monitoring prediction and early warning system. And currently, in fact, uh, the reason why I'm in this uh, session is that uh, we are trying to meditate and try to see how we can be able to build a business case for this uh, early warning system, especially when we want to upscale it nationally. Uh, we may need a lot of uh, it to be to, to have that business traction and uh, you know attract uh, investors. So I think an interesting and timely discussion for me and I find quite a huge relevance in it. Great Thank standing. You Thank you. I think you're in, in the right session uh, today. Yeah. Great, great. So who's next? Maybe Josephine? Can you introduce yourself briefly? Okay, I can go next. So I'm Josephine Warnoff. I am a visiting attorney at the Environmental Law Institute. I'm based in Belgium. And um, I've never made a business model before. I'm a lawyer, so it's not really <laughs> what we do. But um, the idea that we want to try to develop is, um, so we are working with uh, small scale fisheries communities to try to start governance, governance reform, to try to build up uh, community um, co-management systems and uh, we are trying to attract uh, private investment into those uh, reforms and for that I think being able to build a business plan would be really useful and I believe that the law can really help in uh, bringing the um, like community-based management uh, to a more credible level for investors so uh, we're trying to see how we can blend the two like different approaches to really make a good business plan so i think it will be pretty useful <laughs> great you. josephine thank you thank you so much very good okay um, may I? yeah sure okay thank you um i was struggling to actually make a case so i didn't speak earlier but as I heard Stanley, I think um, that's why I'm here also to learn from others. So mm -hmm. as I heard from Stanley, like uh, he was trying to build some case for early warning system. Uh, oh, sorry, my name first. I'm Dinita Mang, uh, currently working in Mercy Corps uh, in one of the projects called uh, Managing Risks to Economic Development. 
is a cross-country uh, project uh, that's mostly focusing on disaster resilience and climate change adaptation uh, activities. Now, uh, I'm working as a resilience mall advisor. Now, talking about that uh, business plan, I have never made it. I have always thought I have a lot of ideas, but um, I haven't been able to make it concrete, like uh, what whether that's a good, it should have a business plan or not, like we should I move forward or not. So that has always been a problem challenge with me, like to make it concrete. So I'm here to learn on that first, not actually to build a business plan, but whether I should build a business plan or not. First thing would be that. Uh, second thing, uh, as I was hearing Stanley, uh, what I loved about him was uh, it was uh, resonating with what I uh, what we also have a problem with. Like in Nepal, early warning system is quite uh, developed in a sense uh, from what it was earlier, but we don't have as much uh, climate information services. And um, it needs a business case uh, so that it needs to be scaled out uh, a little bit further. Because uh, as a person working in an NGO, sometimes we tend to invest on them, but it lasts only till there is a project. And after that, what? So uh, like if I was thinking as he was telling the story, like if there was a business case for it, maybe that would be sustainable. Uh, also thinking about that, uh, we are currently working on a, uh, this low-cost early warning system model also. So we have a early warning system, as I had said earlier, but uh, that's, there is a monopoly in it uh, in Nepal, like only one organization is doing it and uh, it's quite costly, uh, to be fair. Like So looking at a low-cost alternative is very important and we did a piloting, but uh, we thought it was going to finish in a year and it has run into the third year. So how to make a proper business plan case for that also, like that is also a thing. And also uh, something for a piloting case, like uh, everything I have heard since the beginning is like for tested models, what about for something innovative, right? Which might be a kind of pilot only, so which might not be tested. So how do we go about that? Uh, Third one, like um, we are also like uh, working mostly with the rural communities. So access to water, um, like con for consumption or irrigation. And even some, uh, as I was looking at one of the marketplace, I think uh, videos, uh, there was something about fertilizers also, like how do we do that? So those kind of business case ideas also uh, would be very welcome. Like uh, support on those things uh, would be very helpful for us. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. Anybody else who uh, can introduce themselves? I can do a quick, quick introduction. So my name is Shul and Maxime already introduced me briefly. I am in my second year of my uh, master's uh, study forest and nature conservation in, at the Wageningen University in the Netherlands. And I'm currently uh, working with Maxime and uh, Jan Willem at IUCN Netherlands uh, for my internship. Um, at the conservation finance department and I'm mainly here to uh, host this session do the technicalities and uh, help you all out and uh, yeah that's actually about it thank you Shu. maybe T Tarilo or uh, somebody hi else? everyone I can give yes. a quick introduction hey. as well sure okay Oh, sorry, Maxime. Uh, my internet was a bit unstable there, so I probably jumped in a bit late. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Emil Harikishan, and I'm a policy officer at the Global Resilience Partnership, working with uh, Jesper Hornberg, who introduced himself earlier. And I will be providing some support to all of you during uh, this Dragon's Den series. So looking forward to working with you. Great. Thank you. John, could you introduce yourself briefly? Or Tarido? Hello. 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 We can hear you. Hello, Maxim. You can um, hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, I think there are a bit of delays because I you keep uh, freezing on my screen. Okay, my name is Taro Fupa and I'm 
I recently joined Waternet under the Brescia project, which is uh, uh, being... Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, I... As I was saying, I joined the Waternet as a ring, and um, I'm... Which is, we are involved in the um, Brescia project which is being led by Southampton. And um, I mainly joined the session. I jumped right into the dragon's den. It takes a lot of courage uh, to learn. I really want to learn more on how to develop a very good business plan. I've never developed one before. And I'm really um, interested in learning and getting as much as I can from the session on how best to develop a business plan that can help us in our project as well in my area of work. I think that's all I have for now. Thank you. Nice meeting everyone. Thank you very much, Tarido. Great to have you here. John, could you introduce yourself? Hello. Hello. Can I say something? Yes. Uh, okay, my education and I must. Uh, I'll, I'll log in. One check. One check. I'll come. Hello. In. Yes, the connection is uh, a I'll, bit I'll unstable. Is that? Is that okay? No, it's okay. I will come out of another Hello? system. I'll come out of another system. Should be okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I can I continue or I, eh? Yes, you can continue, John. No, no, I'll come out of another system and I join this. Okay, so the connection is a bit unstable, John. I don't know. Okay. Maybe you wait. can introduce yourself in the chat. And also, um, yeah, we, we, we need to continue to, to the real session. Be, so uh, you will okay. learn okay. how to uh, make a business plan because th therefore we are here. Um, okay. So the people who did not introduce fine. themselves, fine, fine. I think almost everybody did. Uh, can, can you put in the chat uh, your name, organization, and maybe also your email address so, so we can stay in touch. And if you have an, an ID to, uh, to transform into a business ID. Thank you very much. Um, Jules, next slide, please. So today's program, uh, to, uh, it's about theory and about practice, but it's about the theory of developing uh, business case, how do you do that? We're using a tool for this called the business canvas model. Uh, we will go through that. And second part of the session is to practice with, with your ID. Uh, and so, so where we can give each other peer feedback uh, very openly. Um, so we improve your ID. Uh, next slide, please. So this morning we had an introduction by Jan Willem. Uh, now we're going to learn how to make a business plan from your idea. Tomorrow Jesper will give a pitch uh, training in which we use our business plan, which we are making today. Uh, we will transform that into a pitch. And then uh, that's very important because on Thursday, there will be uh, a session in which uh, uh, very experienced financial experts are available and you can pitch your ID in front of them and they will judge your ID and provide you feedback about the viability of the case. And together with the, the audience, uh, the, the jury will uh, score all all IDs and the winning ID the, is, is the most promising the most promising business ID 
that person can uh, pitch their idea on Friday during the plenary in which all the CBA participants are there, uh, more than 200 people, and the winner can pitch their idea in front of them and you will get a lot of outreach also through social media of IAD. Uh, so who knows where that, that ends. Um, next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so why do we actually need business cases for climate projects and especially climate adaptation projects? Well, the, the challenge that we want to tackle here is that we want to close the gap between projects that seek finance and investors that want to invest in climate-related projects. Because there's a trend that a lot of uh, finance is being made available for ESG investing and climate finance. But um, that is a very good thing. But all this finance is searching for, are searching for projects to invest in and that also have a positive return. And so far, uh, a lot of finance is not reaching the, the, the project, especially the locally owned projects by communities. So the impact on the local level is, uh, especially in developing countries, is very limited. And most of finance is, is flowing to climate mitigation, to renewable energy, and not so much to climate adaptation. Um, so to give an example, the annual climate finance flows are steadily ramping up by about 10 to 20% a year. Uh, globally, uh, last year it was the, the annual climate finance uh, that was mobilized was 600 US, uh, 600 billion US dollar that that was mobilized globally in climate finance. But 5% only of this climate finance flows to climate adaptation, and much more needed, much more climate adaptation finance is needed to adapt to, to climate change. And IAD estimated that only one out of 10 US dollar of climate finance reaches the local levels where, where, uh, where adaptation, so adaptation impact is, is, is very limited. So all actors from global to local, public and private, and from all sectors, they really must contribute and work together to close that climate adaptation finance gap, especially for locally owned projects. And participation of communities and local entrepreneurs is really key to, to scale up investments in, in this kind of adaptation projects. So yeah, we, we really, thank you, Jules. So to, therefore, we, we have this Dragon's Den series in, in which we help you to develop your business case to really have local climate adaptation impact um, and, and to attract all the, the, the finance that's there to, to attract it to, to your project. So we really need to skills to, 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 to build our skills to close the gap. We really need to learn from each other what works and what doesn't work. Um, what are the success factors? And we often see that the finance can be public or private, but it's mostly a combination of public and private finance for adaptation projects. So it's not the purpose to make business cases out from all your projects, but if it's possible to make a business case out of your adaptation project, then it's very, uh, very useful because you can then scale up your your project and also scale up your your impact so next slide please so we're talking about business case all the time but what exactly is a business case it's basically um, a piece of information it can be a, a written text or a story which captures the reasoning for initiating a project or a company. It also provides some financial insights uh, about the economic benefits. 
and possibly also the costs. Uh, and it's mostly used to inform decision makers whether to invest or not. And this decision maker can be a, a public investor or a private investor or just a customer. Um, so that's the definition of a business case. And we also have, uh, just for your information, some examples. Next slide, please. Because in the last, in, in the last uh, session, in the introduction, there was asked if there are some examples. Uh, so here are some examples to uh, create revenues. These are specified towards uh, ecosystem-based adaptation and mitigation projects. Of course, there are also different angles um, to make revenues in community-based adaptation, more with the social view, but these are more from a natural resources view. Uh, so these can be, for instance, projects that we that have uh, that uh, uh, with with sustainable commodity production, like sustainable timber. Uh, or sustainable fish production or livestock or sustainable cocoa or coffee production. Uh, business case can also be made using carbon credits or from ecotourism in which uh, tourists pay visitor fees. You can also think about payments for risk mitigation and avoidment costs, for instance, in watersheds, uh, downstream users can pay for upstream watershed protection by communities, for instance. Uh, you can also think about uh, upgrading degraded land by improving the soil quality, and then you can sell the land again. These are just some, some ideas, but there are much more also from other angles. Uh, I just wanted to show you this as uh, examples. Next slide, please. So uh, now we're diving more into the core of the business modeling. Uh, I have a small explainer video about what is a business model. It's about two minutes. Uh, it goes a bit quickly, but uh, we will dive into it later uh, in more detail. Yeah. You can play it too. Innovation's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks. Your customer segments, your value proposition for each segment, the channels to reach customers, customer relationships you establish, the revenue streams you generate, the key resources and key activities you require to create value, the key partners, and the cost structure of the business model. But it's not sufficient to just enumerate the nine building blocks. What you really want to do is to map them out on a pre-structured canvas. This is what we call the business model canvas, a tool that helps you map, discuss, design and invent new business models. Let's briefly go through the nine building blocks, starting with the customer segments. These are all the people or organisations for which you're creating value. This includes simple users and paying customers. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition. These are the bundles of products and services that create value for your customers. The channels describe through which touch points you're interacting with customers and delivering value. The customer relationships outline the type of relationship you're establishing with your customers. The revenue streams make clear how and through which pricing mechanisms your business model is capturing value. Then you need to describe the infrastructure to create, deliver and capture value. The key resources show which assets are indispensable in your business model. The key activities show which things you really need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model, since you won't own all key resources yourself nor you perform all key activities. Then once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. So with the business model canvas, you can map out your entire business model in one image. This works for startup entrepreneurs just as well as for the most senior executives. Okay, 
Thank you, Chu. So I don't know how it went at your side, but uh, the internet connection is not that stable from my side. Um, but that doesn't matter because I will explain you everything in more detail. I also see two black block, black boxes in the PowerPoint, but now a very, oh yeah. Is it better now? Yes, now it's better. Thank okay, you. perfect. Great, thank you, Shu. Uh, next slide, please. So just to clarify the, the, the short uh, video, um, this, this is the business canvas uh, model. Uh, it's basically, it consists of all the building blocks that an investor is interested in. So if you're building a business case, uh, a business plan, if you're building a business plan, you basically need to fill in all, all the segments, all the categories, and then you know for sure that you have covered all the important elements that invest that an investor is looking for. So uh, I can imagine that a lot of these terminologies are new for you. Uh, so let's have a deep dive in into everything. Uh, the the most important uh, category are your value value propositions. So um, yes, thank you. So as, as you see there, there are um, sticky notes put in place and, and that's also very nice if, if you if you print such a canvas model yourself, if you print it on, on an A4 or A3 paper, then you can use you you use with sticky notes, uh, you, you can develop your, your own business plan. Uh, but now we have it virtually. So the most important question to, to, to ask is basically what value do you deliver to the customer? What, what, pro what product or service uh, are you selling? That, that is your value proposition. So for instance, you're producing drought resistant maize uh, 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 for, 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 for instance, drought resistant maize yield better than conventional maize. So if you're selling drought resistance maize, then that's your value proposition uh, because you need less inputs of water, for instance. Uh, next, the second most important question is from who are we creating value? So who, who are your customers? Who, who is really going to pay for it? So uh, next. Then the revenue streams. So what are your customers paying for it? Uh, uh, what, what are they going to pay for, for the rent or the fee or the product or the service? Next, the customer relationships. So how do you plan on keeping solid relationships with, with your customers? I truly believe that this is one of the most important categories because if you build personalization into your uh, brand or company, then, then, that, that, it, then that's a really strong point. Key activities. So there are lots of operations that uh, are needed to keep your business running. Uh, for instance, the whole production process or the, the operation, solving problems with permits, uh, setting up a customer service, do your promotion and the networking. So all activities uh, that, that you're required to do. The key resources. You can think uh, of human resources, but uh, also intellectual resources, physical resources like computers or offices, but also fin financial resources is also important. And next, the key partners, of course, also very important because you, you might need sponsors or investors or suppliers for inputs uh, or cooperations that, that you work with. Uh, and then the channels. So uh, what, what, yeah, how are you going to reach the customer? 
for instance, now uh, nowadays we're working a lot with social media websites, but you can also think about newspaper advertisement or word of mouth promotion or just spending in a shop. And then the cost structure, last but not least, the cost structure. So what are the most important costs in, in your business model? Like you can think of the raw materials or maintenance costs or salary costs or insurances, tax, rent, fuel. So this is a, if you filled in all, all these elements, then then you, you have a really solid story to, to tell to an investor. And it's a very nice com communication tool also to, uh, to, to present your case and to think creative. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, are, are there any questions so far? All questions are good. Yeah, could you could you put the uh, <clears throat> the slide the previous slide again? I had one observation. Sure, sure. See, there should be some scope for mid course correction. Where do you integrate that? For what? What was what, what the, the mid course correction? See, there are certain assumptions for the business model. Okay, uh, once you start implementing. Mm -hmm. There will be some sort of a realities being, you know, uh, surfacing. Uh, how will we do the, you know, uh, will you do by logical framework or how, how, how it has to be done? Yeah, so, uh, of course, uh, th th this, you, you need to remain agile. And uh, if, if, if you see that, that your assumptions are wrong or, or, uh, the value proposition is, is, is somewhat different uh, uh, tomorrow, then you, you need to adapt it. And it's always an ongoing process and you need to innovate all the time yourself. And um, also important to mention is that th this is a really, biz really business, business model, but of course, it's also important to note your environmental benefits and your environmental cost, if you have them, and also other externalities, which which are not included in here. No, that's okay. That's fair enough. But fair enough. I'm uh, happy. Uh, what I'm referring to you specifically, see, we have something called indigenous knowledge, mm -hmm. a traditional uh, community knowledge, uh, which is there for hundreds of years. For example, if you want to manage uh, water resources, uh, there are umpteen number of uh, water uh, user uh, uh, cultural lifestyles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I was referring to you that uh, that is very good when you when you look at the various uh, benefits how to make revenue from an intervention. Uh, there could be already some practices. Say for example, uh, if a medicinal plant is of great uh, asset, uh, there could be umpteen number of entrepreneurship developed from that. You see. Uh, so at some stage, I think uh, uh, we should have the indigenous knowledge validation is what I was referring to. No? Yes, uh, exactly. Yes, of course. Yeah, uh, always, always validate with indigenous people and yeah, make, make them an active participant in, in the whole process so, so that they also benefit uh, from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But can that be in the value proposition place? The knowledge from uh, in, indigenous knowledge, can you add that in the value proposition uh, case? The, um, place? Yeah, yeah if, 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 uh, it, it, it can have a place in there. But if you do that, it is going to help, you know, by default. For example, when we conceive a project, if the indigenous knowledge and the and, and and the cultural dimension of that pro, you know project proposal, if it is integrated in the initial stage itself, there could be a lot of uh, synergic uh, effects. Mm -hmm. It will yeah. pay back very 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 richly because the top down approach may not help always. You see, 
No, 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 no. I, I really believe in, in, in bottom-up approaches and indigenous people uh, are, are mostly part of the key partners or they um, or they can also be your, your customers. But uh, yeah, it, it, it really depends on the project. True. True. That's it. So if there are there any other questions so far? Because if not, then yeah, Maxime, yes, maybe, maybe it's good uh, in, in terms of uh, what is needed for the presentation uh, in the coming days. Maybe it's good to mention that yes, we don't we don't expect you to. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I can explain that, John Willem. Uh, but we first have a, a, a question from John. Hello? Yes, John, yes. Okay, thank you for the very good presentation. Uh, for me, I was... Uh, uh, when you started the presentation, the two, because this presentation is more business. It is more of a business oriented, uh, profit oriented. But now for me as a, an, an, an organization, I'm trying to see how I can relate and see now, for example, I, I, I The uh, connection is not uh, that stable. I can apply some of uh, a non-business organization. I mean, a non-profit organization. Yeah, so uh, I think your question is uh, uh, what to do if there's no, no revenue stream, right, John? Come back. Uh, your the, the the question that, that the question that you pose is uh, I'm I'm a I'm a non-profit so I don't want or, or I'm not aiming to to make any uh, profits right so what what to do with this business canvas well I, I think you can I think this business canvas still applies uh, very very well to your uh, to, to, to you, uh, oh, only the, the revenue streams are, are not there. But you can still fill in all the get queries and you, and you can use that uh, for, 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 for building your, 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 your project and your organization. Okay. So, uh, in the coming days, uh, you, you, you can, of course, work on this business canvas uh, model, but we don't expect you to really fill in everything in detail, because I just wanted Thank to you. show you this, mm -hmm. that if you really, uh, are, really want, want to attract investments, then, then it's very useful to use this business canvas. But for, for instance, tomorrow during the pitch uh, session, uh, we we will just use three elements from this business canvas model to make your pitch, uh, which is your value proposition. So, what's the solution that that you're offering? What what's the, the product or service? Uh, the second question is um, who are your customers, and the third question is how are you creating a revenue? So. Uh, that that's the only thing that 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 we ask for 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 the pitch, and uh, it's it's already very advanced. If you can answer these questions, it doesn't need to be in detail. Uh, we are here here to to help you to identify opportunities. Uh, just 
you, you can always send us an email or a chat chat with us. Um, and Jules, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, exactly. Jan Willem, are you uh, able to take it over from here? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Maxim. Yeah, so in the, in the following session, we will break out in two groups. And uh, in, in each group, there will be about three, three to four participants and um, two uh, from our uh, organizations will be there as well to, uh, to discuss together uh, each of your potential projects, your potential ideas. Um, so it's, let's, let's use the session to explore if your project is uh, advanced uh, in, in such a way that you that you have a clear answer to to these three questions, um, and maybe you don't yet have all of it worked out uh, uh, in a very detailed manner, but but maybe together with the group, this is a, a starting point to to look at your project in terms of these three uh, uh, questions. Uh, what is your solution? Uh, what problem does it exactly solve? I, I'm quite sure that all of your, uh, all of our projects will will be able to to answer that question. And then the two other questions: who might be willing to pay for your product or for your service, and how revenue is uh, generated? That might be uh, an additional question that so far you you never uh, dealt with yet, but but use this opportunity to, dis to discuss with each other uh, whether these two questions can also be, uh, be addressed or whether this is a, a direction is, whether this is a direction in which you would like to go uh, in the future. And then let's on the basis of that discussion then, uh, then see if, uh, if you are confident to, uh, to, to, to make a presentation in the coming days uh, and of course, first opportunity to, uh, to, to start uh, uh, working on, on that presentation will be uh, the training tomorrow that will be led by, uh, by Jesper. So we will uh, now be divided in two breakout groups and uh, two persons from our organizations will be in those breakout groups and they will facilitate the discussions. Does that raise any question or comment at this point? It's good enough. Correct. Excellent. Let's see where we where it leads us. I'm very curious to uh, to see and to uh, learn. The rooms are open, but a lot of people have left already. I see. Shall we shall we do a quick um, how do you call it reporting on what we learned if we if some steps in understanding and ideas were made? Because our group uh, has agreed for for each of the three participants to uh, to say in a few in a few sentences what they learned from discussing their fledgling ideas uh, and in in some cases some some further advanced ideas uh, with each other yeah great i think that our group also had had some ideas there were three people with with all great ideas i don't know if they feel comfortable to uh, to, to give a small recap, but I, I think the ideas are very uh, great. Yeah, also in our uh, room. So um, I will well, stop the share so we can see each other then. Oh yeah, yeah. So I would like to ask uh, our group to uh, Josephine. Would you like to start? Okay, I can start. <laughs> um, I'm very shy usually, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was really useful to. Um, 
actually open up the box and start to speak um, about the project. And uh, what I really learned, liked it was to um, present it through the question of the problem, the solution, uh, and then also the question of who is willing to pay for it, because that was uh, often actually a question that you don't ask yourself. So for my project, that was really useful, even if the question is not yet answered, already having also the, the feedback on my idea from the other participants was really, really useful. So I think that's, that's it. Are you going to join the pitch training tomorrow? Uh, I, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> No problem. Now the pitch session for sure. Then the pitch that. session for sure. Yes, that, that's yes. that's step step three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Dini. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so I didn't have as much luck with the pitch development itself because I'm still working on it as I had uh, informed earlier. But like uh, Josephine Vincent. It was a very uh, good reflection on uh, each of our topics and also like feedback from each of us, uh, not only from the uh, co-host uh, host here, but also from the participants themselves also. So a lot of learning in that sense. Thank you. Thanks. Are you going to join the pitch training? tomorrow yeah, I, I'm going to join it. Yes, definitely pitch training, but uh, not sure about the pitch itself. It might it might evolve. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jagannatha. Okay, Jan, thank you. Uh, morning guidelines were extremely useful. Uh, keeping that as the frame, uh, we have tried to look at the problem. The problem is uh, how to optimize the ongoing activities in the urban water sector. And uh, uh, how to get the payment back if there's an investment made. Uh, the present understanding is, is going to pay back by itself, but we need to have investment. And finally, the benefits towards climate uh, uh, adaptability and resilience would be uh, integrating the ecological engineering practices at all levels. It could be domestic, household level, industries, 100 industries are there which are not practicing the environmentally sound technology, agricultural practices, the urban agriculture is so much. Sewage is used to grow vegetables, things like that. Anyway, um, it's going to pay us back because a lot of money is being invested for supplying water. 120 kilometers, water is pumped, every drop is pumped. Like, uh, about, uh, uh, you know, about one kilometer uh, head, measured head. So this is going to be a very serious issue and it pays back. And uh, sustainable development goals, which I did not mention in the group, uh, are going to be addressed. I think any business proponent will be happy to find uh, it pays back if you go to ecological. You see, EcoSense is uh, uh, cost free and it is a real cultural heritage of any sustainable society. This is how we look at the issue. Thank you very much. And the prospect for your presentation? Yeah, very much. <laughs> very much. We will look forward to the first draft. In fact, now it's ready. It's PPTs are ready, and hopefully by evening, tonight it will be through. And you have to get my director present. There's one also one request. Yeah. Can I have your email ID if you don't mind? Yes. Can you? Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, yeah. I'll put it in the okay. chat. So uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, do uh, do send uh, drafts, questions, and. Yeah, and I, I, will, I will, we, we will all be happy to, uh, to give input in. Uh, You'll be very happy. You'll be very happy because we will be joining you uh, just before the presentation, maybe tonight. Uh, if it's comfortable for you, you can reply us back by email, how whether we are going in the right direction so that it will be more, you know, chipped in. Oh, the okay. emails can also be found on the last slide, I believe, of this uh, presentation. Yeah. So you can also note them down yourselves later. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot uh, for this uh, breakout group. Uh, and I hand the mic to, uh, to Jasper and uh, Maxime then. Yeah, so basically we, we had 
Maria Tariro Stanley, who, who had all great ideas uh, for small small farmers and uh, uh, early warning systems and knowledge products for um, to to determine the linkages between extreme weather events and water quality. But I, I think they they can present that themselves maybe. Very shortly, the solution, who's willing to pay for it. Okay, uh, if I can start. Um, the problem we identified was that uh, small water farmers, uh, especially in the marginalized areas, both geographically and in terms of technology, um, they were not able really to, to sustain food security and livelihood uh, sources. So we came in with interventions, which um, we hoped would help to improve their ability to survive. So among those interventions was training them on financial literacy and farming as a business. And then we brought in um, <laughs> uh, various livestock uh, improvement, like improved local indigenous uh, livestock to improve them. So I'll just <laughs> dwell on the chickens we was. You loved the chickens, Maxim. So I'll talk about the, the chickens. So we brought in um, improved indigenous chicken breeds is one of the interventions, but uh, we also then uh, trained farmers in terms of group governance, internal uh, lending and uh, savings and lending schemes. And they were able to save money, lend to each other. And at the same time for the interventions which we were doing, uh, they were supposed to pay a co-funding a co of about 10% so that they take ownership and responsibility for whatever interventions which were coming in through the donor. So looking at the chicken um, and the goats, they were able to then, instead of just selling the, the, the grown chickens to, to the local restaurants and uh, among the communities, they were now able to also... Uh, purchase uh, solar hatcheries and then they would hatch the eggs and they would then they were now selling the chicks they old chicks up to three weeks uh, varying from two dollars a chick to five dollars they were then also and then they were also able to um, improve uh, and diversify uh, in terms of income generation. So in a way, we were able to improve the food security, income generation, and also nutrition at household level. Because we brought in also nutrition gardens and market gardening as well into this dry area with solar power irrigation. So all those became alternative sources of um, income. But we're still trying to get more private sector uh, players uh, to to support these initiatives. So I think that's that's how I can just put it in a summary. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. Uh, great story. Are, are you also joining the pitch uh, development training tomorrow with Jasper? I hope I'll be able to join because I have a presentation. I was trying to to check and see what time. Uh, um, my presentation is on, so hopefully I'll be able to join. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, and then Stanley, do you have some yes. words? Yeah, 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 yes, just in a nutshell, uh, what is your solution? Uh, actually, um, I, pre I, I talked about uh, this uh, drought early warning system and uh, saying we are a team of uh, about uh, four with an environment, a PhD or the environmental engineer, land administrator, with mostly focusing on maize crop modeling. In Kenya, we have a water engineer and we have an R, you know, analyst, that is a, a, a data scientist, and myself, I'm a social economist. So we are developing these. Uh, drought uh, early warning system and one thing that uh, came out uh, so strongly in the discussion 
was uh, the issue of now, you know, the business case for the whole thing. Uh, and I had to say that it is still works in progress. And uh, there was uh, actually one of the takeaway points was the very dicey matter of who is willing to pay and the specific revenue model that we can choose. And I say that this whole uh, point is something that is being informed by case studies. We are conducting case studies in Kisumu. We have one in Marisabit. Some, in fact, some guys are already in the field today. They left the office today to go to Marisabit. And we are just trying to find out the willingness to pay by the small scale holders, rather farmers. Uh, we want to, to, to research and find out their food beliefs what they believe about food security, what they believe about the economics of climate change and whether they can be willing to take up some of these things. And I say that for the small scale farmers, our revenue model will, will uh, specifically be subscription based. But if we find that we are better off with, uh, with uh, selling the whole product to uh, local governments, in Kenya we have county governments, and uh, maybe what what you know policy makers or at national level then uh, our revenue model will just be maybe a a, a one off maybe payment to sell the system to the ministry or or maybe something that is just annual but it came out and one what, what, what i learned and i can be able to share with my team when i meet them is the need to cautiously uh, discuss the uh, and uh, think about the issue of uh, revenue stream, the revenue model. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, yeah. Very good. I think it's a very promising idea. Will, will you be participating tomorrow in the pitch session? Yeah, actually, I'll, uh, I will be able to follow through the whole actual all sessions of Dragons uh, Den. I'll be able to follow through all of them this week. Great, Stanley. Stanley. Wonderful. Last but not least, uh, Tarido, are you there again? Do you uh, want want to say some words about your your case, your ID? I think she's not there. I think she's texting in the chat. Oh, yes. Yeah, indeed. So maybe your microphone's not working. Yeah, she, she, she's working on a, on a, on a service, on a, on a knowledge service to uh, determine the, the impacts of extreme weather on water quality. Uh, this can be the who's willing to pay for it. As I understood it, are government agencies uh, who want to do better adaptation planning. Um, and also water users, also for instance, beer breweries or water companies, like private sector actors who need clean water, they are, might also be willing to pay for the, the knowledge and uh, can also be skilled to scale up to other river basins. I don't know exactly of which river basin this uh, research uh, is tailored to, but it can be replicated and scaled up. So I think that, that that was her case and I think it's a very strong case and we invite her to uh, course to to join the pitch uh, development session tomorrow as well and also on uh, Thursday to, to pitch her idea to the to the dragons uh, tailored to Lake uh, Chilva in Malawi wow all right so lots of uh, promising ideas I'm getting very excited Uh, Ju, where where are we with uh, with the slides? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so I think we all had great ideas. <laughs> we, we've just done that. Oh, sorry, I was muted the whole time. I was actually speaking. Um, <laughs> um, I see now here, the next slide is about the dragons. So we could do a small recap about the dragons and the criteria. And that would be about it, I think. Okay, great. Um, it's a, actually a good thing to do maybe because there, there might be people on this call now that weren't there in the morning. Um, um, we'll just go through them quickly anyway. We, we have four pretty amazing uh, dragons uh, with lots of experience. Um, starting on the left this time, we have uh, Koja Nan. He does more than what's stated on this slide. Uh, into philanthropy, uh, investments, um, has been involved in community projects and so on. He'll be able to ask really intelligent questions. And he also has a vast network and, and actual interests in finding things to, 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 to engage um, with. Uh, Doris, uh, right next to him, is a winner from two years ago. Um, she um, lives and works in Nairobi uh, with um, waste collection scheme, uh, drawing on, on community uh, engagement there in, a, in, a, in what she wants to become a sustainable model and, and uh, has sort of been there, but during COVID it's been tough as for everyone. Uh, next to her, we have uh, Edith Kiss, who is a director of development and portfolio management at a fund called uh, Althelia Fund. Uh, again, Lots of experience, have seen a lot of different initiatives, uh, will ask very potent and intelligent questions. Uh, and last, we have uh, Adam Bornstein, um, who leads the work on innovative finance and systems change at the Danish Red Cross. An absolute pioneer when it comes to uh, new models and, and uh, ways to think, has been instrumental in setting several um, projects up himself. Um, they're great people. Um, I think what's two things that are worth mentioning is, is um, when you pitch, it's as much a learning opportunity for you uh, as it is an opportunity for you to present what you're talking about. So it's an opportunity to listen to other people's um, opinions and views and suggestions and ideas. Now, your project is your project, so you don't have to take it on board, but it's uh, usually very useful, especially from, from such experienced and, and um, uh, high caliber individuals as, as this. The other thing that's worth uh, uh, highlighting is um, um, I think all the projects I've heard um, are good and you definitely stand a chance delivering a really solid pitch. Uh, and we'll go through the, based on a lot of pitching in my own life uh, and, and having uh, been part of, of um, processes like this before, um, I'm sure you can deliver excellent pitches and it's a great learning opportunity uh, from these guys as well as just pitching um, and, and thinking through what your business model should look like. Um, and, and you don't have to agree with everything we say. Um, you might have other ideas and you know you can pitch um, them too. Briefly on the criteria, um, we are with um, uh, CBA now. Um, it's climate impact. Uh, we need to see that the solution has a positive and significant contribution to climate adaptation objectives. Um, so that's important. But all the ones I heard have. Uh, sustainable development, again, uh, I heard it in all uh, the ones that I listen in on now. Uh, it should have a direct and positive impact on the SDGs. Business case, um, this is a slightly more tricky one. Um, uh, we want it to be a sustainable model. So it needs some kind of viability, but you can think outside the box a little bit. It doesn't have to be um, uh, a traditional business. It can be something else. It can be providing a service to other service providers, uh, something we discussed in, in, in our breakout uh, group. Um, scalability, is this something that can um, uh, grow? Can it grow in place or can it be replicated into other places? Um, something where you can find a blueprint for what it is that you're doing and, and spread that to other places. Um, scalability and business case quite closely aligned. Um, if you want to scale something, you'll need more funding for it. Getting more funding for something is easier if you've done it once 
and if you can prove that this is a model that carries itself. Um, we don't expect you to know all the answers here, but we want you to explore in your pitches these aspects and present those. And then it's up to the dragons, as well as, as you and, and us, um, if we um, can give feedback to you, to try to fine tune that and, and um, ensure that those things marry. Um, there is no such thing as a finished idea. Um, you have ideas that, that you can work on and, and, um, and, and develop always. Some of them are more mature than others. Um, all business ideas, all project ideas, all initiatives like this are on a journey and they keep evolving. And doing this helps you evolve a little bit um, faster, uh, I hope. Uh, and finally, team. And to me, when I sit on, on um, 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 investment boards and so on, I look at the idea, I look at the opportunity and the market and the context, and that's important. But the most important thing is um, the team. The team has to be uh, full of passion, has to be dedicated, have to um, have the right uh, set of experiences in the team. Um, do I feel that they can execute this? Um, are they professional? Are, are they showing up on, um, you know, looking good, uh, being ready to, to pitch? Uh, those things are, are important. Um, yeah, that's briefly on the, on the criteria. Uh, Maxime, maybe I hand back to you or, or do you want me to talk through this? Yeah, sure, if you feel comfortable. Yeah, ahead. sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Um, we've gone through the introduction um, and uh, right this session we talked about making your own business plan uh, and we could hear some really good uh, ideas and examples. Uh, tomorrow we, we won't have the pitching session tomorrow. We, we might practice a bit but tomorrow is, is about developing your pitch. So a lot of stuff that will happen tonight and, and uh, tomorrow during the session and so on should, should go into a pitch. Then we'll provide you with a suggested structure and even a, a suggested slide deck if you want, um, or you can use your own. We would strongly recommend that you cover a couple of the topics we, we highlight here, as well as tomorrow uh, in, your, in your pitch. Um, and we will talk also about other things to consider when you do a pitch. Um, small tricks uh, of the trade uh, that um, actually guarantees you uh, a higher success rate uh, that boosts your confidence and makes you aware of what it is that you should focus on when you when you are making the pitch um, as well as boosting your confidence because no one knows your project better than you and um, if you can convey a lot of passion and uh, um, a good understanding of what it is that you're trying to do um, you stand a really good chance of, of moving forward as I said, um, all pitches are, um, it's part of your evolution, uh, your evolution and the evolution of, of your idea. Um, so we will then on Thursday be meeting the dragons. And that's, a, that's an important part of this journey. You need to sort of, you need to arrive at that, sh that crunch time when you are pitching to someone who is paying attention, um, who is actually interested in what you're doing, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Um, but that can listen to you and give you a bit of feedback. Uh, what also happens when you're pitching is that your own ideas evolve and, and you find uh, better and smarter ways to explain what it is that you're doing. Um, all, all the presentations I've heard so far, informal uh, as they were, they were good. I understood what you want to do. And you can take that a notch higher. Um, there will be a, a selection process of a winner um, and then on Friday, we will announce that winner in the big plenary um, with uh, everyone present. If you have any questions um, between now and tomorrow or after that, uh, send us uh, an email. Um, we, uh, we're happy to review your pitches once you've done them. Um, we won't do the pitches for you, <laughs> um, but we will give feedback. It's your pitch, your idea, your initiative. Uh, and we're here to, to help you uh, convey that in a clearer way. 
normally what happens is that we ask questions. So what do you mean by that? Or um, is there another way you can explain this? Or what's the number here? Um, asking for justifications and, and uh, a little bit of evidence. You don't need a lot of evidence to support your idea uh, at this early stage, but you need some. You, you need to show that you make sense and it's, it's, uh, it sort of fits. Um, and then it might be that you've left something out just because you're doing it and, and you're so deeply embedded into this project. And we can give a bit of guidance on maybe you need to expand a little bit on your experience or, or something like that. So thank you. I think that's it. Um, yep, I'm getting nodding here uh, from the right hand column. Yes, I think we uh, we can wrap up the session. It's also nearly three, so then we get kicked out automatically. Um, thank you all for being here. That's that's what I want to say, and I look forward to to hearing your pitches. Great. Uh, I want to thank you. It was a very good uh, whole uh, morning and evening. It was good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So see you tomorrow uh, morning. Then I hope tomorrow morning European time. Yeah, okay. Oh, <laughs> thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, even for the talk and uh, how to position these as business uh, pitches. It, it's very helpful. Thank you. And also the advice on thinking outside the box. I mean, that is very critical, especially now. Uh, so thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see each other tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you.